Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Curvigato. Welcome to today. Listen, if you've been feeling weird, strange, wondering what's going on, you're in the right place. You're going to be edified by the word of truth. And oh my goodness, before I forget y'all, this is crazy. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to let y'all see this picture. It is so beyond amazing. And so yesterday, God had me read Isaiah 51. He woke me up and said, Robin, read Isaiah 51. And so I read Isaiah 51 and it spilled over into Isaiah 52 the first three verses of Isaiah 52, but all of Isaiah 51 verses 1 through 23. And in my Facebook memories today, it is crazy. I'll show you what the, where it says seven years ago, but the personalized tag is Isaiah 51 1 in my Facebook memories today. Is that not crazy? And yesterday I read Isaiah 51. So here it is. There is the tag from seven years ago, right here. You see seven years ago, and here it is blown up, Isaiah 51.1. I just had to show y'all that. That is beyond amazing. I'm just amazed. God is just so amazing at how he confirms himself. And so I'm going to encourage you in, I hear the Father saying, I hear the Father saying, hey, Andrea and Christine, God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. And so I'm going to encourage you in what I posted today, and I hear the Father saying, and again, as we are in this time of expectancy and transition, you might feel weird and odd, like the odd duck you don't fit in. And, you know, that's because things are changing and your spirit man is perceiving something is changing and your soul is kind of pivoting with it. And so it's going to be, you know, just this kind of awkwardness that you might be in right now. And if you're feeling that, that is a okay. And I also want to bring to you just a little snippet of what God gave me yesterday in relation to strongholds in the soul. And so he showed me in relation to strongholds, which I've written about extensively and exhaustively in Mindfulness Man of Christ. It is also in the new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease. And he just keeps unfolding more and more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And so in that particular revelation that Holy Spirit gave me yesterday, God was showing me how we medicate not only pain in the soul, which can become a stronghold such as an addiction or a behavioral issue, but we not only medicate the pain, but what we're doing is we are trying to mediate in our flesh the self-image, the poor self-image. So get this. You know, people think about, okay, just like when I was an alcoholic and I was medicating the divorce pain with alcoholism in the late 1990s and God brought me Resurrection Sunday Power Freedom 2002 and set me free. And so I've explained it as medicating the pain, but God really just brought me more understanding on a microscopic level and he shifted me. And he said, Robin, you weren't just medicating the pain. You were mediating the poor self-image. And I went, what? Wow, that is so wild. And so I want to bring this word in, mediate. And I want to bring in that definition. And so mediate means to intervene in a dispute or disorder. It means correct, uh, connected indirectly through another person or thing. And it means as an agency and it means interposed. And it comes from the Latin word medius, which means in the middle. And so what happens if our soul gets in the middle between God and the soul and our soul kind of tries to filter God or stop God from doing a finished work in us? We're mediating the soul in our own strength. And so when we have a poor self-image, 
our mediation leads to bondage. Now hear this because this is such wisdom from the Lord. You know, again, we talk about medicating pain, trying to get through strongholds that have resulted from some type of trauma or injury or wounding. And we look at the pain, but you don't understand the result of the event is to affect the self-image, who we are in Christ. And so if the soul is not anchored, deeply rooted, grounded securely, Ephesians 3, 17 and 18, in the love of Christ and feeling that love comfort us by the Holy Spirit, then we will step in and mediate and we will try to mediate the self-image instead of going to God and to the Word we will mediate it by, I can listen to this conference. I can go to this conference. I can listen to this video. I can, can read this book. And there are many great tools out there that are ordained by God. I'm not denying that. I've got many tools out there that are about the healing of the soul. And so I get that. But the thing is, is that we can gravitate to things that are not going to benefit our soul. And it's really pride in our members trying to step in and to act like God and to make ourselves a okay. And so the Lord has just been showing me just different things in relation to areas in which the self image has been affected and you have behaviors and you're scratching your head like, why am I acting that way? Why is this? a thing in which I gravitate in doing. And it might be a stronghold. It might be a behavior. And you're curious. You're uncertain. And what it is, is you becoming mediator instead of letting Jesus be mediator. Jesus be advocate. And he advocate for our soul. And to be in God's rest. When we look at scripture, in relation to Jesus is mediator. He mediates for us. He prays for you and I that we can rest in the fact that our high priest is praying for us. He is interceding for us. Amen. And I'm looking at that scripture so I can get it for you in relation to Jesus being our mediator. So we see in the New Testament in Galatians and 1 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, and Hebrews. And so I'm going to get into the New Testament. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstance, we may be thankful and give thanks, for this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus, the revealer and mediator of that will. We also see in 1 Timothy 2, 5, For there is only one God and only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. We also see in Hebrews 8, 6, but, uh, but, as it is now, but as it now is, he, Christ, has acquired a priestly ministry, which is as much more superior and more excellent than the old as the covenant, the agreement of which he is the mediator, the arbiter, agent, is superior, more excellent, because it is enacted. Hold on, it's, my computer's going slow. I was reading it before it was totally pull, pulling it up. And so let me just go to scripture in here of Hebrews 8, and I will get to that. Don't you love that Jesus is our mediator? Not us. If we try to mediate for ourselves, we will always fail, right? But if we let Jesus be our mediator, we will always have good success. It is not by our power or might, but it is by God's Spirit. Here it is. It finally pulled up again. So Hebrews uh, 8, 6, um, 9, 15 Christ Messiah is therefore the negotiator and mediator of an entirely new agreement, a testament covenant, so that those who are called and offered it may receive the fulfillment of the promised everlasting inheritance. Since a death has taken place 
which rescues and delivers and redeems them from the transgressions committed under the old first agreement. And again, I want to read Hebrews 8, 6. But as it is now is, but as it now is, he, Christ, has acquired a priestly ministry, which is as much superior and more excellent than the old as the covenant, the agreement of which he is the mediator, the arbiter agent is superior and more excellent because it is enacted and rests upon a more important, sublimer, <clears throat> higher and nobler promises. Hebrews twelve twenty four, and to Jesus, the mediator, the go-between agent of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood, which speaks of mercy, a better and nobler and more gracious message than the blood of Abel, which cries out vengeance. And then Galatians three twenty. Now, a go-between intermediary has to do with and implies more than one party. There can be no mediator without just one person, yet God is only one person, and he is the sole party in giving that promise to Abraham. But the law was a contract between two, God and Israel. Validity was dependent on both. And so, again, the reflection is that Jesus is our mediator. And I want to get to this because God wants to bring you some freedom. Amen. How many of you know, as in Psalm 103, that God's mercies are new every day? It's interesting because God has me waking up every morning and my morning, part of my morning routine is just thanking him for everyone and everything. And he'll just have me go with a list and he will just have me identify people, individuals, as well as like you all, my Facebook group people, as well as, you know, family, loved ones, friends, and also that we have a house that he's provided, that he's taken care of. And so he just has me just blessing him every morning. And this morning, as I was blessing him, he said, Robin, you know that issue in your soul that's really stretching you? And I said, yes, Lord. He said, you know what? My mercies are new every day. And he was identifying Robin. Jesus is mediator. And so I want to get to this point. And so mediator here in Greek is mesites. And mes it's funny because listen to this. The pronunciation is spelled M-E-S-I-T-E-S -E -E in Greek, <clears throat> but it's pronounced mess -e. When you're messy, guess what? You got a mediator for your mess. mess -e taste. I am messy taste, God. Help me, Jesus. I am a mess. Help my mess. I confess, Jesus. Help my mess in Jesus' name. And so, messy taste means to go between. It means mediator. It means reconciler. It means intercessor. And this comes from the Greek word mesos. And it means middle. And it means before. It's, it means in the midst. And we see this in context in Matthew when Jesus says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. And so this word mesos is in the midst of. And so if you get in the midst of your own mess, it's going to be messier. And sometimes you can do things in your own strength. That's why fasting and prayer is so important. When you fast and pray as God leads you, I'm not going to tell you what to do because I'm not going to be liable for any health care issues. Do your own research. Talk to your doctor. See what works for you. But when you fast and pray, you really abound in the power of the seventh day rest, Hebrews 4, in God's grace. And God is able to show you your mess where you're on that operating table of Hebrews 4.12 and he goes into your intents and motives. And this is what God was showing me. 
and I'll just share kind of some wisdom and what I've been going through and what the Holy Spirit has been showing me because, you know, I did not realize over the last couple of decades, pretty much, that I had been in a midst of long-term trauma. And it was uh, critical voices that met the threshold of trauma. And so I get into that in chapter seven of the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease and Open Thesis. And chapter seven is the last chapter and it's Trauma the Curse. And so I talk about critical voices building to a threshold of trauma. And so I've been in it through a couple of decades and it's not really until now that I've been able to just really stop, pause, say a lot, think about what God is doing, seeing what he started doing in July, what he did in the last three months, and the breakthrough and the freedom that he's brought me, but also the wisdom that he is giving me, the understanding in areas of my soul where there might be an issue of a way I might behave or bend towards and in the natural looking at people looking at me wouldn't think anything about it. They just wouldn't. But I just know in my members that it would almost be like a tick with someone that has Tourette's, not an actual tick, but just a bending, a leaning of the soul. And I said, God, you know, what was, what is going on? I just want understanding, of course, because I'm writing the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease, I'm living it. And so I've looked at Job and I've talked about Job's couch and I am going to do a note. I just am waiting for the exact timing of the Lord when the anointing and the grace is present to bring all the scriptures and combine it and give a note and a teaching on it. And so the Lord was showing me in areas in which I'm walking in a greater freedom, where I've walked in freedom through insecurity, no more insecurity. I walked in freedom with no negative thoughts, but there's just a bend, a behavior in my members that it's used to. And I said, God, what is going on? And God said, Robin, I want to show you something. I said, well, praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Show me what it is. And he said, you don't realize that through the trauma, while you were in the midst of it, where critical voices came into a threshold that built up and accumulated to the threshold of trauma, that you were in this space for a couple of decades, he said, you begin to mediate the poor self-image in certain areas. And I said, okay, God, tell me more. And he said, Robin, you don't realize this certain bend has been a crutch in your past to mediate the poor self-image, to not think bad of yourself when other critical voices were coming at you. And I said, oh my goodness, God, show me more. And he said, Robin, let's look at your past when you were addicted to alcohol, when you were an alcoholic. And I said, okay, God. He said, in the midst of the late 1990s, when you were an alcoholic, he said, you began to drink and you thought it was only medicating your pain, numbing it. I said, okay, God. He said, you weren't just medicating the pain. You were mediating a poor self-image. I feel the anointing on that. Listen to that, saints of God. Because someone here needs to hear this to get understanding. And once you get understanding about Job's trials and you understand, and just like I supposed it was when I wrote, wrote the August 28, 2024 Eyes Opened note, which I'll try to put up again. And Holy Spirit woke me up at 1 a.m., gave me all these scriptures, had me wake up at 1.30. He was already giving me scriptures from 1 to 1.30. And he said, Robin, get up and write the note, eyes opened. And that note was written at 1.30 a.m. in the morning because Holy Spirit just kept giving me all these scriptures. And in that note, I mentioned that people were thinking probably that Job was a bad father and being critical of him and critical of his children. And sure enough, right there in chapter 8 in Job is the evidence 
as one of his friends was talking about, yeah, your children got what they deserved, bottom line, basically. But there was just a lot more criticism, and all of his friends are criticizing him when he is down for the count, when he is at his lowest point because he's being sifted. And they don't see the sifting because they got a log in their eye, and all they want to do is criticize and kick a man while he's down. It's interesting because in my Facebook memories today is, don't kick a man while he's down. Give him hope and encouragement. And so the Lord began to show me. He said, yes, Robin. He said, your alcoholism, when you became addicted to alcohol in the late 1990s, that was you mediating a poor self-image. And he said, people don't realize that most strongholds, most addictions are the mediation where they step in. And they mediate their own self-image where it's a poor self-image. And they mediate it through the devices or they begin to have a bend in behavior of being a certain way, doing a certain thing. And they don't realize that they're trying to do the job of Jesus Christ. And we can just let go. We can trust God that there is therefore now, Romans 8, 1 now, one, no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus, that we are receiving God's mercy, His grace every single morning. So that's for someone today as well that needs to hear that, that you might be frustrated with yourself where you've been. You might not be happy about some particular aspect about your behavior or something but maybe it's because you're mediating your own poor self-image instead of receiving the mercy of God. Instead of knowing that Jesus Christ is your high priest and Jesus is praying for you right now and that you can trust him. And instead of flogging yourself about how bad you are, which is condemnation, the accuser, the slanderer, Satan, Turn your eyes up to where your help comes from and know that Jesus is for you, that he died for you. And if he died for you, then no one can criticize you. No one can judge you. That is only for the Lord. Amen. And so I want to end with reading what I posted on Facebook today. And I hear the father saying, I hear the father saying, you have entered a new time, my child, as the power of my kingdom is made known to your heart and mind, lifting you up to where you are blessed with every blessing in the heavenly realm. I am quickening your spirit in this hour, knowing that this is my appointed time, my set time of favor. As you look diligently to me, I will give you the gift of faith in this hour to cause you to know the hope to which you are called, the hope inside of you of my son, Jesus Christ, as you look to draw near to me in repentance, ridding yourself of the things of this world and that which easily besets your soul, loosing yourself from the bonds around your neck in the power of my Holy Spirit to walk in freedom. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I am your God. I will do wondrous things in your midst of which you will be in awe and wonder, knowing that I am the God who heals and delivers to the uttermost. I am bringing you out of the wilderness, out of the time of testing like Job, setting before you my reward because you have been found faithful. You have not denied my name or let go of my word, and I will cause even your enemies to be at peace with you and take note that I love you. They will see my favor and my love upon you, declaring that you are the blessed of the Lord. I would have you hear this, my child, that this is the time of great reward for my servants. As Job's latter was greater than his former, so too those who have endured patiently will see that their latter will be greater than their former. I have called those who would endure and humble themselves under my mighty hand, 
as they were sifted and tried in the faith. I have chosen them that they might bear abundant and great fruit, having been pruned of the log in their eye, the stranger's voice, only holding to my voice, speaking that which is true, lovely, noble, virtuous, excellent, and kind, knowing my peace that has garrisoned around their hearts as a wall of fire, bringing my glory in their midst so that they will arise and shine, knowing their light has come and my glory has risen upon chosen ones. You thought you failed, my child, and I tell you that you endured the sifting of Satan. You endured the testing of your faith. And in this moment, I tell you that you are coming out of the wilderness, leaning on your beloved, and my wall of fire will come upon you, my glory in your midst, as you are lifted into a throne of glory, fit for nobility. Get ready, my child. The time has come. The scriptures from which this comes, first is Song of Solomon 8, 5, and 7. The Amplified Classic reads, Who is this one who comes up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? And as they sighted the home of her childhood, the bride said, Under the apple tree I awakened you. There your mother gave you birth. There she was in travail and bore you. Set me like a seal upon your heart, like a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death. Jealousy is as hard and cruel as Sheol, the place of the dead. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a most vehement flame, the very flame of the Lord. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If a man would offer all the goods of his house for love, he would utterly be scorned and despised. Zechariah 2.5 in the Amplified Classic reads, For I, says the Lord, will be to her a wall of fire around about, and I will be the glory in the midst of her. <clears throat> Isaiah 61, 60 verse 1 in the Amplified Classic reads, Arise from the depression and prostration and what circumstances have kept you, rise to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Isaiah 61 verses 1 through 3 in the Amplified Classic reads, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, the poor and the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives and the opening of the prison and of the eyes to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of His favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament, a garland, and diadem of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment expressive of praise instead of a heavy burdened and failing spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, lofty, strong, and magnificent, distinguished for uprightness, justice, and right standing with God, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. 1 Samuel 2, 8 in the Amplified Classic reads, He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the needy from the ash heap 
to make them sit with nobles and inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. Matthew twenty two fourteen in the Amplified Classic reads, For many are called, invited, and summoned, but few are chosen. And finally, Hebrews eleven six in the Amplified Classic reads, But without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists, and that He is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek Him out. Saints, you just Matthew six thirty three it. Seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and He will add all things unto you. And know that God is working all things to your good because you love Him and are called according to his purpose. His mercies are new every day. Don't mediate your self-image. Go to the mediator, Jesus Christ, and adore and praise him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day.